This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Daybell's hearing uh, taking place just the other day on whether or not to have cameras in the courtroom and the actual decision now been delayed to November 29th. It's interesting because the first trial here, Lori's trial, cameras were banned during the trial itself. We just had to get audio accounts. Lori didn't want the cameras. In this case, Chad actually does want the cameras in there. The prosecution does not. What's your thoughts on this? What's the pro of having the cameras in there versus the cons? It's it's a hard one. You know, with any of these cases, we start looking at the admin, I call this administrative side of things, but it's not really the administrative side of things. It's, it's the nuance. It's the granular level. I thought of a numerous things with this. One, you know, I went back to really, let's take a look at him and what he did before all this craziness. You know, he worked at a cemetery. He went to Brigham Young. He wrote books. Matter of fact, I think they're still out on Amazon, at least as of April they were. And he may think he's a pretty compelling figure. Mm -hmm. And when you think you're a compelling figure, again, it was him with the charisma of Lori that formed their mini cult. He may think he's more compelling than he actually is. And when your life is on the line, again, I'm not sure of this is, you know, how this is going to work in their court system in Idaho, but where's he at? <laughs> yeah, in, in Idaho. It, it is okay. a trial taking place in I, Idaho. I, I, everything keeps sliding around Idaho. I, know. I wanted to make sure I got it right. <laughs> when all else fails, either guess Florida or Idaho, and that's 90% of the cases. <laughs> yeah, you know, but with that kind of compelling, you know, behavior in there and his life on the line, he... If he's trying to sow seeds of doubt in a jury, mm -hmm. I think maybe, or also the court of public opinion, which is why you'd have the, the media in there, he might think he can do that. Although I'm skeptical of his ability to do that, since I think Lori was the real charismatic person behind the little mini cult they had. Yeah. It's interesting to, to contemplate the idea that he believes himself to be a prolific figure, and that's the driving factor behind wanting cameras in there. I believe it. I mean, he certainly wrote all those books. He had kind of the mini cult thing going on. Lori was certainly in him, and there certainly were several other characters, too, that really seemed to buy the the story that, that he was selling. I guess this far into it, the question remains, does he still believe that about himself? Has he been humbled in any of this? Or do you think in his own way, just as Lori seemed to be very much in her own world of belief that uh, he too is in his own world of belief i think he's probably still believing it i just finished a, a good book by a friend of mine his name is uh, shane Parrish, and he wrote the book clear thinking mm -hmm. and he highlights something that robert green highlights in his books all on human nature and that is i think he is suffering like we all do but maybe him more than others in self-serving bias you know, he's bigger in his own mind than anyone thinks he is. I, I, I mean, you see this all the time as a podcaster, too, I'm sure. You have people on that have fallen in love with their own voice and not even realize that they think they're more popular than they actually are because you hear yourself in your own echo chamber. You're surrounded by people that are into what you say, but you haven't really quite realized that the people that you're surrounded with yourself is a very small number of people. And Chad might be suffering from that as well as I've seen how the... They're laying out the defenses, and I can't remember the term they use, but they're basically going to defend him differently, or in order for him to be acquitted, they've got to go at her. So I'd be interested to see really about how much they might try to throw her under the bus. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that would be a really interesting move to make because what we've seen thus far, the allegations that were made, in the Lori trial, even though as much as she seemed to not want to throw Chad under the bus, the attorneys didn't really have many options other than at least hinting at the idea that maybe more of this was Chad's doing than Lori's. Is it going to be the exact same mudslinging, you know, passive aggressive mudslinging, if you will, but just in the opposite direction this time around, you think? Yeah, maybe. I, I really see him as a more defensible individual than she is, only because w when you look at their backgrounds and what you can find online, granted, it's a really small microscope. Um, for some people, it is. For some people, it's not. 
but he actually has a background with a job record. He does things to make money and an income. And so before he had met her, his life arc was not full of chaos. It was not stellar, but it wasn't by any means that a stretch of imagination, a unsubstantial one. Because sure. again, when we're following these life arcs of behavior, when did his life arc change is when he met her. And granted, people say the same of her, but not really. I think she's been, she was so self-serving. She's so over the top with her, her narcissist belief in herself. Again, that's a term of art that I'm not a licensed clinician to say, <laughs> but she seemed to fit that pattern of life and death surrounded her for quite a long time. Not so much him. So I think they might be trying to really lean on that as a defense. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.